Are we rolling, Maestro? All right, guys. This is a video I've been meaning to do for a long time, and it's long overdue, and I'm finally getting to it. I'm going to explain securement to you today. This is something that used to be a given, something everybody knew, but apparently, like a lot of things in trucking now, that's out the window. So what we're going to talk about today is mostly about what a chain is worth as far as securement and what a strap is worth as far as securement in the DOT's eyes. So if you ever get stopped and they're checking securement, you're going to see the DOT man carrying one of these. It's just a um, securement cargo tie down calculator and he's going to be checking your stuff using one of these and either a stamp on the trailer or this new trailer I got doesn't have a stamp, which is interesting. So I had to actually get on the internet, which I'm sure he could too, everybody's got a smartphone, and go to East website and get the securement values for pockets and spools and whatnot. Um, my last trailer, Rittenhauer, had uh, a stamp on it. Most trailers I've ever had, had a, has a stamp on it. This one does not, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it's pretty much the same, although this manufacturer has some big differences and we're gonna talk about that. So let's do the strap. Now, you'll hear general rule of thumb, old school way of thinking is a strap is worth 4,000 pounds of working load limit. Okay, now you times everything by two. So if you have 20,000 pounds worth of cargo, you need 10,000 pounds worth of securement. So what they would generally say is this is, two ways guys would say it. It's worth 4,000 or 8,000. It's worth 4,000 pounds of working load limit, which is enough securement for 8,000 pounds worth of cargo. Now where they came up with that is two places. This chart, and this is an old one, but the new ones aren't any different. You go to the back and you go to a four inch strap, it says 8,000 pounds, but you have to see where it says unmarked webbing or strap. So if this is unmarked, he's going to give you 4,000 pounds, and that's it. But this strap is marked, and most of the new ones are, and they're, they're a lot stronger nowadays. And you can see this strap is actually worth 5,400 pounds. Can they see that? So 5,400 pounds working load limit, that's what working load limit, or 10,800 pounds for the cargo if there isn't a weaker link in the system. And what I'm talking about is the strap could very well be worth 5,400 pounds, but if this roller is only worth 4,000 pounds, which a lot of the rollers used to be, then it doesn't matter what this strap is worth. They're going to go by the weakest link where you're going to tighten the strap up in this roller. However, this roller is, I think it was 5,500 pounds. The new new trailers are a lot stronger. I look down here. This is a 5,500 pound roller, so it's actually worth more than the strap. But there's another thing. We got to go to the other side of the trailer here in a second and look where you hook the strap. But real quick before we do that, on this trailer, this is kind of this is one of the unique things. You'll see guys hook straps to the rub rail now. On a Rittenhauer, it'll actually give you, I think it gave you five or 6,000 pounds to hook to the rub rail. For whatever reason, East does not want you hooking to the rub rail at all. And right here, it says, do not use rub rail. In parentheses, they call it a tarp bar, which is for hooking bungees, to secure load. And if you go to their website, it says the same thing. So if you take a strap on this trailer, and uh, do one of these deals like a lot of guys do. According to the manufacturer, and if the DOT man sees that or Googles it, I don't care if you have 10 straps on here, it's worth nothing because the manufacturer gives no credit for this rub rail on this trailer. So keep that in mind. Some trailers do. I don't hook to rub rails. I know a lot of guys do. Um, this trailer, do not do it because it's worth zero. It, it, it mitigates everything else and you're basically gonna have, if you did all your straps that way, you would have zero credit, like you're going down the road with no straps. So 
Let's go to the other side. I think the, the strap hooks, I'll show you over there. Uh, they're 5,400 or 5,500, I can't remember, but let's go ahead and shut it off there and we'll go to the other side. Good to go. So here's where you hook your straps on this trailer. I have a love-hate relationship with these. They're pretty cool, they slide. And I thought, wow, oh, these are see there, they've got some dirt in here. That's the problem with these. They get dirt and they get really hard to So, and of course, if there's any snow or ice, there, you're gonna be using a hammer, so. I don't like them as much as I first did when I first got the trailer. The coolness is worn off and they're kind of a pain, but there is nowhere under here to hook a strap. You have to hook to these. Or to the rub rail that has a sticker that says, do not use. So anyways, this is worth 5,400 pounds. So the strap is worth 5,400 pounds. That roller is worth 5,500 pounds. So the strap, and this hook are the two weak links, they're equal, 5,400 pounds. So that strap, using this hook and that roller, is worth 5,400 pounds or 10,800 pounds worth of cargo. So the 4,000, 8,000 rule of thumb, although is safe because it's actually worth more than that and there's no penalty for using more securement than you need. But you can actually gonna get 10,000 800 pounds for the securement and the DOT eyes for that strap in this system. So uh, let's go ahead and shut it off and go back there and we'll go to chains. Going? All right, back to chains. So the DOT man is going to get a little thing out here. This is a 3 8 grade 70 chain. That's what I got up there. This is just one of my extras. This chain has a, they will give you on their chart, 3 8 let me get the slider to the right spot, grade 70, there we go, 13,200 pounds worth of cargo securement, so it has a working load limit of, by 2, 6,600 pounds, which would be handy because that's what uh, two spools is worth, we'll get to that in a minute. So your chain is worth, has a working load limit, and it's stamped on here as well, of 6,600 pounds, you times that by 2, it's worth 13,200 pounds worth of securement for cargo, total cargo weight. So, if you have 20,000 pounds, this is worth 13, two of it. We're not, that's not an exact formula, so we'll get to that in a minute. Now, that's the chain. Then you gotta find the weak link. There's three things in this system. You got a chain, you got a binder, and you got where you hook it, okay? They go by the weakest link. So, the binder, you don't have to really worry about these too much. This has a weight rating of 33,000 pounds. But you have to divide it by two because you've got two ends to it on uh, hooks. So it's 15,000 something. This has a working load limit of on each end, technically. Uh, you have to take these numbers off the handle and divide them together. And there's a little formula to it. But in most cases, don't worry about your binder. It's gonna be stronger than anything else in the system. So we know this is worth 15,000 something, nothing else is, so we'll just move on. Now, like I said, most trailers, or I don't know if I mentioned that on the strap part, most of these trailers will have a stamp on them. This one does not, okay? Um, like the Rittenhauer I just had did. This one I had to go to their website, but it's pretty much the same thing with a couple exceptions. So this is why you've got to know your trailer. And those exceptions were on the Rittenhauer, if you hooked a single spool, I think they gave you 4,000 pound working load limit on the spool, which would be 8,000 pounds worth of cargo. East gives you zero. They don't want you hooking to a single spool and good for them, you shouldn't do it. Also, on uh, a Rittenhauer and some other trailers I've had, if you combine a pocket and a spool, they would give you whatever, a certain amount. East uh, did not. They did not have that on their website. So if you hook this, uh, a pocket and a spool, wreck the chain around those two, it's worth nothing. And of course, the rub rail is worth nothing. We covered that in the strap uh, bit part. So. To find the weakest link, we're just going to go over this real quick. The, the only way to get the full 13,000 
200 pounds worth of cargo securement or 6,600 pounds working load limit. On this trailer, <laughs> second is worth less so this will give you the 13,200 pounds worth of cargo securement because you have 6,600 pound working load limit and that the chain and these two spools are the weak link in the system the binder is worth more so so the old rule of thumb 10,000 pounds per chain although it's an average and it's an okay thing to use the next thing I'm going to show you is why you're really better off to just know this because if you do this, you can do it this way. You come in here and you hook the pocket. A lot of guys do it, especially if you're working with short areas where you can put the binder like right down here. Now, hooking a pocket, you only get from the manufacturer on the pocket 4,000 pounds, which would mean your chain's only worth 8,000 pounds worth of cargo, okay? So, if you do that, just remember to use more. You're down to 8,000. Don't use that rule of 10,000. Now, the only other way they have on their website that is okay to secure chains is to wrap the pocket. <laughs> They give you 5,500 pounds, or you would get 11,000 pounds worth of cargo securement. Uh, 5,500 pounds worth of working load limit, which is where you're going to get closest to your 10,000 pound old school rule of thumb for a chain. But you can be under, or you can be a couple thousand pounds over. Don't just get caught up on that 10,000 pounds, because trust me, the DOT man's not, if you hook that pocket, and you're thinking you got 10,000 pounds, you don't. You only got 8,000 pounds uh, worth of securement for your cargo or 4,000 pound working load limit. However you want to look at it. It's best to think cargo in my, my mind. If you got a 45,000 pound coil, you're going to need five chains, okay? So even if you hook them all at 8,000, yeah, you would still have enough. Now you'd be 5,000 short, so don't hook them all on the pocket. Make sure you wrap at least one. So, other than that, the only thing else I wanted to cover this video that really seems to be lost are two things. With all that said, you can't just take, say you got some real long plastic pipe that don't weigh nothing, and you only need, according to this system, four straps, and it's 50 feet long. You can't use four straps, and here's why. The most you can be between securement points is 10 feet. And I showed you guys how to find that. 99% of trailers, this one included, is two feet from the center of this pocket to the center of this pocket. It's 24 inches. So you say so you got a strap like right here or whatever. Two, or wait, two, four, six, eight, ten. You need another one right here. I would actually do eight because if he gets out his tape measure and you're a little bit over here and a little bit over there and you're 10 feet, 4 inches, you're getting a ticket. So, you still have to be within 10 feet of each securement. You can't have securement more than 10 feet apart. So, and the other thing I wanted to cover is what they call penalty strap. I don't think a lot of guys understand this. Uh, if you're running a flatbed that doesn't have a headboard or a headache rack, uh, even if it's all the way to the front of the trailer, you have to have what they call a penalty or a ghost strap, which is two straps or two chains, whatever you're using, within the first five feet so that they're two feet apart, okay? Um, even if you have a headboard or a headache rack, if you're more than 10 feet off of it, you have to have the penalty strap. So if you can see guys 
uh, like when I haul roofing shingles. They're like way back here. They're way more than 10 feet off. So I have to have two straps on those front two pallets and they'll be within two feet. You can't just throw one. So at a bare minimum, you need to throw two. You can single the rest all the way back out if you want. Most guys, myself included, will put two straps on the back one as well. But since you're 10 feet off the headboard, you gotta have two straps within the first five feet, AKA penalty strap. That's all I got, man. I hope I explained this right. Um, if I missed anything or misspoke, which I do a lot, I will have him type it up as I'm talking through the video to try to correct it so I don't confuse you even more. Hope this helped. If you got any questions, ask in the comments. If you got any other videos you want to see or things you don't understand, uh, let me know. All right, y'all. God bless you.